Let the truth talk to him. Let the truth talk to him. Let the truth talk to him. Talk. Let the truth talk to him. Let the truth talk to him. Let the truth talk to him. Talk. Let the truth talk to him. Let the truth talk to him. Let the truth talk to him. Talk. Yo, yo, microphone check, one, two, one, two. Where my truth yeah, seekers yeah. at? What y'all want to do? Yeah, yeah. Welcome back to your favorite podcast, Truth Talks. I am your host, Crazy Bone. What's happening with it, man? I'm the bum, Keith G. And y'all know we got another one for you, another interesting topic. But yeah. for the simple fact, it's interesting because we're going to be talking about one of my favorite hobbies and pastimes. Yeah. also happens to be my occupation. Right, right. The music industry. And some place we don't want to go. I was just about to say, but unfortunately, <laughs> we're not going to be... Speaking about the music business in a good light tonight because yeah. there's nothing good about these things that we're about to reveal to you this evening. Oh, that's real, man. Oh, yeah, it's real deep, man. It's real deep. You know, even, you know, even too, before we get started, too, man, you know, it's, it's too many men, names to mention, but you know, with the comment board, but we appreciate every comment that's going down, even the dudes who ain't got no sense and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But thank you to all the support oh, yeah, that yeah. everybody we've been getting, you know what I'm saying, from the comments and everything like that. Man, we'd be remiss if we, you know, mention one name. It's just it's about 6,000 comments on there. So, but one of these days we'll take a show and do that. But keep supporting and keep watching this show, man. Keep seeking the truth. Yes, indeed. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, and I also want to make it clear, you know, that uh, we. We are not trying to discourage any aspiring artists at all. Nah. That's not our intention. Our intention is simply to wake up the minds and open the eyes of everybody that may be expi- aspiring yeah. to make it in this business. And just to give them a forewarning of some of the evil things that has been going on within the music scene and behind the music scenes as well. You know, wow. So getting right down to the issue at hand, I just want to say to all my fellow hip-hop artists and hip-hop fans that we have been had again. Damn. We've been bamboozled. Hood winked. Let us stay, I tell you. All that, all the Malcolm X words. <laughs> Once G. again, you know what I'm saying? Now, a few of y'all might have already heard about this, about how the music industry has very close ties with the private prison system. Yeah. And the reason being is because the music business has invested millions of dollars in the private prison system. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You heard it correctly. Again, the music business and the entertainment business in general, meaning people who control the media, the music industry, and also publication, private prisons. Yeah, magazines, all that. Somebody uh, <clears throat> somebody sent me an article, like I think it was like six or seven years ago. Right. And I read <clears throat> I read this article, bro, and I was I was like absolutely shocked. Very Talk shocked. Talk to us. Talk to us. In fact, I want to read this uh, letter, I mean this article, but it's actually a letter that was written by somebody that was a decision maker at a major label. Shot caller. And he said, you know, he was invited to a very special meeting about the future of hip hop back in 1991. Okay. So here's what he said. This is how the events went down at the meeting. Break it down, man. Okay, just ride with me, okay, because I'm reading this... uh, Oh, this is real. Uh, hold on, wait. Let me try to. Uh, way out article too, man. You know what I'm saying? When you told me on telephone about this, wait till y'all hear this, G. You know what I'm saying? It's it, it's just it's mesmerizing how these people do. You know what I'm saying? The plans that they got to for the down for how far they will go. You know what I'm saying? To make people, you know, actually slip in society. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so it says. Oh, uh, and the title of the letter is. Um, the secret meeting that changed rap music and destroyed a generation. Damn. So she says, hello. <clears throat> After more than 20 years, I finally decided to tell the world what I witnessed in 1991, which I believe was one of the biggest turning points in popular music. And ultimately, American society. I have struggled for a long time weighing the pros and cons of making my story public as I was reluctant to implicate the the individuals who were present that day. Mm. So I've simply decided to leave out the names and all the details that may risk my personal well-being and that of those who were, like me, dragged into something they weren't ready for. <clears throat> Damn. Hold on, let me... Uh, so we're going to tell the story. We're going to tell the story. We ain't scared. You know what I'm saying? What they going to do? They after us, not just playing. <laughs> <laughs> look, that black van. So look, so he says, between late 
between the late 80s and early 90s, I was what you may call a decision maker with one of the more established companies in the music industry. I came to Europe in the early 80s and quickly established myself in the business. The industry was different back then, since technology and media weren't accessible to people like that, like they are today. The industry had more control over the public and had the means to influence them any way it wanted. Right. This may explain why in early 1991, I was invited to attend a closed-door meeting with a small group of business was business insiders to discuss rap music's new direction. Hmm. Rap music's new direction. Yeah. Little did I know we would be asked to participate in one of the most unethical and destructive business practices ever seen. Christ. So said so so this was the meeting. <clears throat> the meeting was held at a private residence on the outskirts of Los Angeles. I remember about twenty five to thirty people were 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 being there. Right. Most of them familiar faces. Speaking of those I knew, we joked about the theme of the meeting, as many of us did not care for rap and failed to see the purpose of being invited to a private meeting to the get to to discuss the future of hip hop. Talk to them. Among the attendees was a small group of unfamiliar faces who stayed to themselves and made no attempt to socialize beyond their circle. Based on their behavior and formal appearances, they didn't seem to be from our industry. Our casual, our casual chatter was interrupted when we were asked to sign the confidentiality agreement preventing us from publicly discussing the information presented during the meeting. Mm. Needless to say, this intrigued, in some cases, disturbed many of us. The agreement was only a page long, but very clear on matters and consequences which stated that violating the terms would result in job termination immediately. We asked several people what this meeting was about and the reason for such secrecy, but could not find anyone who had the answers for us. A few people re refused to sign and walked out. Nobody stopped them. I was tempted to follow, but, cu but curiosity got the best of me. That's right. A man who was part of the unfamiliar group collected all the agreements from us. So now it's going to get to the good part because the meeting about to start. Talk to him, Jay. <clears throat> it says, quickly after the meeting began, hold on one second. Get your popcorn, y'all. Popcorn, get your pistol. No, like, For real, though. Um, <laughs> quickly after this meeting began, one of the industry colleagues who shall remain nameless like everybody else thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. Mm. I think he was the owner of the residence, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as a part uh, as part of this small group of decision makers. At this point, I began to feel slightly uncomfortable in the strangeness of this gathering. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry, which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. Damn. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into millions into the building of privately owned prisons, and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability of these investments. Hmm. Then he says. I remember many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in awe and confusion. At the same time, I didn't know what a private prison was, but I wasn't the only one. Sure enough, someone asked this, someone asked what these prisons were and what any of this had to do with music. <clears throat> we were told that these prisons were built by privately owned companies who received funding from the government based on the number of inmates. Mm -hmm. The more inmates, the more the government would pay these prisons. Mm -hmm. It was also made clear to us that since these prisons are privately owned, as they become publicly traded, we'd be able to buy shares. Most of us were taken back by this. Again, a couple of people asked what this had to do with us. At this point, my industry colleague who had first opened the meeting took the floor again and answered our questions. He told us that since our employees 
had become solid investors in this prison business, it was now in their interest to make sure that these prisons remain filled. Our job would be to help make this happen by making music which promote criminal behavior, mm. rap being the music of choice. Mm. He assured us that this would be a great situation for us because rap music was becoming an increasingly profitable market for our companies. And as employees, we'd also be able to buy stocks in these prisons. Immediately, silence came over the room. You could have heard a pin drop. Hmm. I remember looking around to make sure I wasn't dreaming and saw half of the people with dropped jaws. My days was interrupted when someone shouted, is this a fucking joke? At this point, things became chaotic. Right. Two of the men who were part of the unfamiliar group grabbed the man who shouted and, and attempted to remove him from the house. A few of us, myself included, tried to intervene. One of them pulled out a gun, put out a gun, and we all backed off. They separated us from the crowd, and all four of us was escorted outside. My industry colleague, who opened up the meeting earlier, hurried out to meet us and reminded us that we had signed an agreement and would suffer the consequences of speaking out about this publicly or even those who attended the meeting. Damn. I asked him, why was he involved with something so corrupt? And he replied, it's bigger than the music business and nothing we can do. And, oh, no, no, no. It's bigger than the music business and nothing we would want to challenge without risking consequences. We all protested as the as they walked, as we walked back into the house. I remember word for word the last thing he said, "It's out of my hands now. Just remember, you signed an agreement." He then closed the door behind him. The men rushed us to our car and actually waited until we drove off the property. Damn. So, so uh, this meeting, bro. Now that's a lot for a meeting right there. Oh yeah. Definitely. You know, and this person later on, he said, you know, this person actually ended up leaving the music industry after this happened. Well, a, f a few years after this, he ended up leaving the music industry. OK. And um, he'd say he just like, you know, over the years, he just he just felt guilty because he said as he sat back and he watched these plans come into play, come to a reality over two decades, he sat back and was like, wow, they really pulled it off. Yeah. They really pulled this off. He was like, they were told not to sign any more political rappers, any any more rappers that had messes in their no music. No positivity. It was all to be gangster rap music that they promoted and 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 put out. So if you wonder where and Brand Nubians went, if you wonder where Brand Nubians went, where Poor Righteous Teachers went, where Public Enemy went, where KRS One went, and all sorts of groups like that that was talking, yeah. about, even Queen Latifah and Moni Love and those. You know Everybody. what I'm saying? It, Any, it, it, yeah. It's a back door. Yeah, anything that was harmless, fun rap, you know, anything that had a message in it had to go. Yeah, that's you why you, if you even notice, though. Now yeah, you, we talk about that all the time. Even be brief with it, you know what I'm saying? Uh, those charms that came out, like, maybe 1988, 89, the African mm -hmm. charms, those, those disap they lasted for about two years, and they disappeared real quick. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, definitely, Quickly. definitely. Now, after reading all this, you know, it actually made me feel a few different ways the first emotion I felt was shocked because I was definitely taken back by this just knowing the level of evil that's involved by even even thinking of a plan like this you know right. what I'm saying the second emotion I felt was anger anger because it's not enough for them to exploit our culture and make all the money off of it mm -hmm. because let's keep it real the industry has never been favorable towards the artists never, never. but they're going to go beyond the artists to get the artist to influence and lure in the consumer, which they knew at the time were mainly minorities. Yep. In other words, keep promoting gangster rap so that the youngsters will be influenced by them, which in turn will incite them to want to act like them. And it's very and it's a very good chance they'll end up in their prison. Yeah. So they're getting paid twice. They're getting paid from the artists they sign in, and then they're getting paid from the from the the people that these artists influence that goes to prison trying to be like these artists. Yeah. So they 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 making a killing. A killing. They're using the music business to promote their private prison business. 
Uh, my man is right right there talking that right 1988 a man named tom beasley man that's the co-founder of the uh the the um the uh the the, the corrections the corrections for california the corrections for corporation of america that's the cca you know what i'm saying excuse my french i'm reading this thing right there real quick it's the cca so in 1988 he founded that and this this is in uh straight straight uh concert with the same thing so it's like the music business you do what you do on your side and right. over here with the correction <coughs> facilities, we're going to do on this side because and now in 1970, there was 500 prisons. You know what I'm saying? Only 500 prisons in the United States. D- to this day, there's 1,700 prisons right now. Mm. That means big business. I'm talking about that. Then flip it over. You know what I'm saying? If, if flip it over is a word yeah. because they're making a lot of money off of these things per inmate. You know what I'm saying? So g- getting with this, with the same thing of the, of the music, it all, it all went hand in hand. And we just end up, we just partying at the same time. So... Us as the artists is the tool they use. Yeah. The music is the bait. Yep. And the young consumers are the prey. It's a cold game. Cold game, bro. Cold you know what game. I'm then I feel sad. Sad because everything we seem to try to create, we always seem to give it away. We're always yeah. being tricked and deceived into believing that they have our best interests at hand when clearly they never have and they never will. They never will have our best interests at hand. Every it's, it's blow after blow after blow after blow. And they can't even get up. Yeah. They always find us some kind of, kind of way to scheme, take, and just make sure but we stay in our prospective places. Even look how they flip it even to the, even right now. Like right now what we saying to a young dude that's a young rapper, he would the, the way it's set up, it would look for him to hate us because it's like, what you trying to stop my business for of making the money? You know what I'm saying? An underprivileged dude that never had nothing and he trying to get some snaps, but he just doing this thing off of ignorance and they know that. So it's dudes like us that'll be trying to say something like this and they'll have the rapper dude looking at us like we the, f- like we the fool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Trying to tell, trying to rain on his parade. When we ain't trying to do nothing like that, we trying to tell y'all, look here, they making $1.7 billion a year on this private prison system. Out of the 2.2 million people that's incarcerated, you know what I'm saying, in the United States, and, and by the way, United States got more people incarcerated than anybody in the world. Mm-hmm. Out of those 2.2, 2.2 people, 2.2 uh, 2 million, 20%, you know what I'm saying, that, 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 that's, that's, that's us here. They got us caged up. Man, you know, uh, some of these things we've known just by being eyewitnesses, you know, from from the decline, like we were just talking about, from the decline of politically conscious rappers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or anything positive just don't sell these days and they're the reason. It's not because the music is not good or these artists done get too old or they exactly done all of a sudden forgot how to rap. Yeah. You know, it's because they want to push their agenda again. You know what I'm saying? It go it goes back to that agenda. They want to push their agenda. We mentioned we mentioned it all the time. And the reason they're trying to keep the reason they're trying to keep it a young man's game, as they say, yeah. is because they want to man- manipulate the young artists. Right. Give them money, keep them quiet. Whereas the older generation, you know, they used to, we used to be like that, but the difference is we've grown up. We've gotten wise. Yep. We've, we, we've studied, you know what I'm saying? And we're not going for that old bullshit y'all used to tell us, you know what I'm saying? You know, and, uh, and, and, and we're not thinking young like how we used to think, you know, like notorious and just belling without a purpose. No, yeah. no, we stopping and we thinking now. But see, that's a problem because that doesn't sell. So you're now officially washed up, but not really, but in their eyes you are because you're put because you're not pushing their agenda. Exactly, bro. That's exactly what it is. You know, bro, I know plenty of rappers from my era. <clears throat> I know plenty of rappers from my era. And even some before my and even some before me that can still hang with a lot of these rappers out today. Facts. Oh, yeah, for sure. Facts. And in my opinion, probably they may be a little bit more creative because they'll have a message in their music and they'll still make you rock with them. And a hell of a delivery, yeah. Facts. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. But to promote these, but see, to promote these prisons, you got to have, to, to promote anything, you got to have a commercial. 
the man Tom Beasley, you know what I'm saying, the co-founder of the Corporation for the Prison Systems for America, you know what I'm saying? This is what he said. He said they asked him, "How are you going to how are you going to promote this? How are you going to commercialize the prison system?" He said, "You do it like you do anything else, like you do real estate. You promote that like you do a hamburger franchise. You promote that like like how you do a car corporation, anything like that." So that's just what the business did. Are we saying the people that go to prison don't deserve to go to prison if they did a crime? We are not saying that. What we're saying is when you start a business, now you're starting to look for customers. That's a yeah. whole other thing. You're looking for customers, and it, it, it's basically you're setting the system up yeah. so that they fail to be automatic customers. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's 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 like a trick bag that we never get out of. What's that? What's that? And, rate? And, and, and it wasn't designed for us to get out of it. What's that rate, Craig Jack? Tell them that rate that they said they got to have a. Uh, it's in the contract for them too for the private prison oh, yeah. system. Ninety. Oh, oh. They have to have ninety percent. We we gonna we, we gonna get into that. We are gonna get into that. <laughs> now, now this is just another. This is just another example to show that the powers that be are very very far along in advance with their agenda. Oh yeah. To, to the point to where it's completely out of our hands. I hate to say it, y'all, but we blew it. Once again, we blew it. We yeah. gave we gave up our culture only to have it flipped around and used on us as a weapon to destroy our communities and influence the young minds of our young generation in a negative way. Yeah. We were so blind that we didn't even know it. They tricked us with the money and gave us all this stuff and you know, a lot of people, you know, forgot about the struggle. But yeah. honestly, Keeping it 100, keeping it 100, though, because I know I just said, you know, uh, 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 they flipped on us. But honestly, keeping it 100, you know, I heard, you know, like we, we didn't we didn't we wasn't the ones that glamorized the street life or selling drugs. We were simply we simply told our story, right. paint, painting a picture of our struggles and where we came from and what we had to do just to be where we are today. The media glamorized it. They glamorized it. We were simply telling stories of struggle, where mm. we came from, and they turned it around and flipped it on us. That's how it all came about. Yeah. Real talk. No, that is really, though. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, and I heard, um, I heard uh, one of the youngsters out here, I think it's that, is it Joyner Lucas? I think that's his name. And he was saying that he blamed the generation. Oh, you know, yeah, I've seen that. He blames the generation for, for, for you know, like talking about drugs and, like you know, like glorifying it. Yeah, yeah. But like I just said, bro, we use this. Hip-hop was, was something totally different when it first started. And this is why you youngsters need to educate yourself on what hip-hop was. This is right. why. Because we didn't glamorize a damn thing. This was our craft. This was our culture. We was telling our story. They saw it was money in it. They took it and they pimped, the they pimped it out. Right. They glamorized it. We were simply, like I said, telling our story. This, this is stuff we lived. They took our lives. They took our lives and made it, you know, and made it seem like to the kids, oh, this is something lovely. Maybe you want to try this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we say in a lot of our songs, this ain't what you want to do. Don't be like us. Be better than it. We doing it, telling y'all this, so maybe you can skip this part and try another way. Yeah, and not even to denote the cat that tried to say, you know, that uh, he blamed the rapper. You know what I'm saying? He on the right trail, but you can't blame the puppet, bro. You got to blame the puppeteer. See, a puppet can't move without no strings if you ever seen a puppet show. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I ain't trying to be funny about nothing like that, but that's just pretty much how this game goes. You, the puppet cannot move. It's just an empty doll right there until somebody puts, puts up and pulls those strings. So you kind of on the right trail. You're just blaming the wrong party about this. Are the MCs doing it? Yeah. That's why they hand select these dudes at 19 and 18 <clears throat> and 17 and 16. It's getting lower and lower because you know what? When you get somebody that never had no money before, and you offer them a, a platform to be doing what they're doing. And what they're doing right now is a bunch of ignorance. But they don't know that because a lot of cats ain't got no mothers and no fathers. You know what I'm saying? At the same time. If they got a mother, they ain't got no daddy. If they, got, if they even got that. So you got these dudes who all of a sudden got a, a large amount of wealth. And they basking in ignorance. Because it's all, all they day. know. And I choose to say ignorance, not stupid. Because ignorant means you just ain't hip to something. 
You know what I'm saying? You just ain't wise to the things that's going on around you. So young cats, like my man said earlier, we ain't trying to bash nobody. We ain't upset because young dudes at 16 and 15 is jumping out of Rolls Royces or whatever. I hope for that. I want you to be flourish and have your family and stuff like that. But look at the cost that it's costing us. You might not know that, but that's why this uh, show Truth Talk is going on right now. Check it out. Corrections, Corroborations of America. Yeah. Which is known as the CCA, which is the biggest name in the private prison industry. Yep. They contacted 48 states and offered to buy their prisons. However, the stipulations of the deal stated that before the deal was made, Here it go. they had to ensure that the state, they had to ensure the state that they would be able to maintain a 90% prison capacity capacity a year. Meaning, they had to guarantee the state that they would be able to keep the prisons full at all times. And who would be the main candidate now, to be put in that? there? You already know. Blacks, which are the majority, and Latinos. Bottom line. And we can't gloss over that number real quick. 90% occupancy rates. Hell, uh, Best Western and Holiday Inn don't got that. The Waldorf Astoria don't play. It's probably, it's probably equivalent to the Waldorf Astoria. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. Or, or, or going to that Ritz-Carlton. Yeah. 90% mean that snaps. And then, and then, you know, this is when you have to stop and think. Like, how can they possibly ensure that they can keep the prisons at a 90% capacity rate? What kind of devilish scheme is they plotting That's this time? It's always something, man. It's always something. Yo, and even to, now, go, even to go along with that real quick, it's a place now, it's a place in Arizona, it's a prison in Arizona that did not get the 90% occupancy rate. So what had happened, the state had to pay the private prison $3 million. Mm. And the state don't like doing that. So what the state is going to turn around and do is they're going to have, that's why they're going to, uh, you see a dude going to jail a little bit longer than he should for something that's like, damn, he went to jail that long for that? That's yeah. how they repay that back because no state wants to pay no $3 million fine or a penalty that they must pay to the private system organization. Now, after after this deal was made, after this deal was made, two months later, an anonymous email was sent out to various but selective, but a selective few members of the music and publishing industries that gave an account of a secret meeting that took place where it was determined that hip hop would be manipulated to drive up privatized prison profits. Damn. That's that's the letter we just read. You know, that's the letter that we just read when you know, like you know what I'm saying, that's the same thing we just read. So we already know that ninety percent of we, we, we already know that 90% of what we read, watch, and listen is controlled by only six six main media companies. Mm-hmm. We spoke about this topic on our Weapons of Mass Destruction episode. So, so you ever notice, <clears throat> you ever notice how a lot of these new rap artists come out and before anybody has really heard of them or their music, they're already famous Star with, ready. with millions of followers and all this expensive jewelry, and you like, yo, who the hell is this? Where they come from? It's because, you know, because I'm a music connoisseur. So I'm usually up on all the hot music and artists all day long, young to old. Plus, yep. we do the Craylist show. We play everything from younger play music. to older. You know what I'm saying? But a lot but a lot of the young cats is coming out of nowhere. And I'm like, yo, how did they gain so much? How did they gain such massive attention and notoriety this fast, but nobody has heard their music? You know what I'm saying? And that's when I and that's that's when we have to remember that the powers that be, they control everything. Oh yeah, they control the avenues necessary to manufacture any celebrity yep. and create any trend at any time. Here goes some more facts. Talk to him, Time Warner. As the owner of Warner Brothers Records, among many other labels that he owned, can not only sign an artist mm-hmm. to a recording contract, but as the owner also of Entertainment Weekly, yep. can see to it that the artist gets the cover front cover next week. That's a hell of a plug. A smack dab right in the middle. That's a hell of a plug. So that means that and, means and, yeah, and yeah, that. yeah. And this is and and this is without any consideration 
of their music whatsoever. The artist will be an overnight star. Yep. So they're not signing these artists because they possess extreme talent. Not all no. of them. Some of them are very are, are talented. Yeah. But a lot of these artists, they're not signing them because they possess possess talent. They're signing a lot of these artists because they're great influencers of bullshit. Yeah. They're great influencers of bullshit. Excuse my language, but it's the truth. And they're running around blinded by all the diamonds and the money and the women. You know the life. Yeah. It's a cycle that just continues to seem to keep going and going and seem like it's never going to be broken. You know what? In the coldest part, they tried to even hide their names and, and put it under an umbrella called the Vanguard Group Incorporated. You know what I'm saying? But just like my man already said with the, uh, with the Time Warner, they one of them, Sony and Universal. Those are the big three right there. And I'm not scared to say them. Sony, Universal, and Time Warner. Those are the ones who have the largest share in the prison system independently for the private prison system. And, and by the way, the private prison systems, they have out of 150 million, out of 150 million inmates incarcerated throughout the U.S. Now it's up to 2.2. They house 8 percent of that. So, you know, what I'm saying 8 percent of that, you know, what I'm saying that's what they doing right now. So they're doing big business. Like I said, they're making one point seven billion dollars a year on the private prison, prison system alone. And it's going yeah. to be gumming up soon. It's going to be getting up a little, the 8%, give it a couple of years, it's going to be at 20%. You know what I'm saying? Because the t they, the taxpayers, the, the initial plan that they had was saying, you know what, it's going to be easier on the taxpayers with the private prison system. Now, do the stats on it, the private prison system costs just as much to a taxpayer as it does to the state and the federal prisons. Yeah. Oh, man. So there is no, it wasn't, there is no... We did this for, it's a break on the citizens. They ain't thinking about no damn citizens, man. They thinking about that $1.7 bill a year. Extra money. Plus, the last thing I'll say about this, and you don't need the last thing. We'll say, where, where'd all the uh, the factories go and all the jobs in the United States go for all that? The United States don't uh, make nothing or manufacture nothing no more. All the factories are closing down. Look in your rural areas, Nebraska to Ohio to even places out here in California. You know where everything's being made at? Engines and toys and cars and all prison. that type of stuff. Prison. In the prison. So yeah. you can pay yeah. them a zero. That, Talk to them. That baby, uh, uh, that stroller you pushing your baby in. Yeah. was made in the prison. That crib she's sleeping in. Was made, made in, in the prison. prison. Engines for Better cars, man. Not just like, see, they got to stuck off those 1930s movies and all that where they was making license plates. They ain't just making no license plates. You so, know what I'm saying? So, you know, um, again, you know, uh, we're not discussing this topic you know to um deter anybody from pursuing their dreams nah. although although i know some of y'all sitting back like damn like really like you know like yeah like you know it, it, it's 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 pretty much a um uh, it's pretty much a trap everywhere we go but here's the thing you know um you have to continue to live you have to continue to push on yeah you have to continue to live your life and as long as you're not as long as you're not, you know, um, you know, a uh, 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 crooked like these people is with these agendas, yeah. and you're just doing it to make an honest living, you, you, because because I, I, you know I don't I don't believe there's a there's a corporation in the world that's big that's not corrupt. I don't. You could be you could be working at McDonald's. You may not know the corrupt shit that's going on with the you know in the in the paperwork and stuff like that. But I'm sure they done stepped on a couple necks and you know like did a little dirt right, to get right. where they want to be as well. So yeah, Ronald you, ain't got you, that perm for nothing. You know, but 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 you can't. But that ain't to say you shouldn't go. You, you know, like all you youngsters, that ain't to say you need to go get a go get a part time job there because you know they, they oh they are crooked. You know what I'm saying? Everything we do, like we're we're in a system that was created crooked. Yeah. So, you know, we have to live within that system. As long as you're not letting that system rub off on you and, like, making you crooked like they are, you have to maintain, you know, because I know a lot of people going, you know, like, because I know a lot of people going to say, oh, well, why are you still in the music business then? Like, nigga, because I'm not doing what these niggas do. Like, I'm, right. I'm taking my gift and I'm using my gift for positivity regardless to what they do. Just like... Just like God is allowing, you know, the police and all these government officials to be in power for the time being. Time but being. He doesn't condone them being crooked and all the and all the injustice that's going on. You know what I'm saying? So you don't have to be a part of that. You can just, you know, like make your living, do you, and just don't be a part of that. You know what I'm saying? Because there are many artists, you know, there are many artists out here that have nothing to do with this so called Illuminati. Yeah. Everybody ain't sold they sold. 
You know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't, you know what I'm saying? Everybody ain't, you know, uh, 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 everybody ain't crooked. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are certain individuals that have agendas and they're pushing them. You know, yep. but you but but you can't ball up and just start living your life like a hermit and just, you know, like just stop going out and just stop doing things. You know what I'm saying? It's, you know, if that was the case, you know, I wouldn't be like be able to maintain in this music industry like I do. You know what I'm saying? Really though. Already knowing that we bailing against the, we marching against the wind, rough winds, heavy winds. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's pushing us back at every chance they get. You know, but we got to keep moving forward. It's a must that we keep moving forward. We got to, and, man. And, and I'm not, and you know, I'm not saying this to, to make people want to uprise and, you know, rebel and go marching and all nah, that because, yeah, you know, that. like, I think I told y'all before, to me, protesting and all that does nothing. They have their plan already in place. If y'all don't like, like if y'all don't understand that this is part of Bible prophecy, it's going to happen regardless of what y'all oh, yeah. do. The wheels is in. You can in run order. around. We shall overcome. To you can't sing no more. What's going to happen is still going to take place because yeah. it's God's plan. Yeah. It may seem messed up now, but all these things have to happen for God to roll in His plan. They have to happen. Yeah. They have to. What you're witnessing has to take place. And it's not for us to go jump up in the middle and, like, you know, try to protest. Oh, oh this is wrong because you won't win. You're not going to take the government down. Yeah, this ain't no race, It's woe. not going to happen. This ain't no race, whoa. It ain't nothing like that. Like my man say, it ain't that. And the things, all this do lead up to, you know, saying when you trust in God, we talking about some ugly things. But, you know what I'm saying, I told my man, too. I told, I, t I, I told it to him because I'm reading a lot of the comments. Be careful. Y'all talking about things that, you know, a lot of people come up missing with and all that kind of stuff. And I said to my, I said to my cat, I said, you know what? I would be worried if I didn't, you know, know who God was through his son Christ. You know what I'm saying? I would be nervous about these things because this is some stuff that people don't want people to close. listen to. us. Yeah, they don't want nobody to talk about this. They want us to continue to talk about what's Cardi B doing. What are what's love and hip hop doing? And nothing's wrong with those people in those shows, but they would want to twist us against those people like that. Not saying nothing's wrong with those things, but they want to keep us on what's going on over there, so that we can not we can be ignorant and blind to what the, thus says the Lord. You know what I'm saying? When it's a simple kind of plan, you know. So I'm not worried about my life or nothing like that. We have conversation about the black van. We be playing about that a little bit. You know what I'm saying? But it's still, you know, I know that it's out there. Those are elements that want to destroy and, and come against, you know what I'm saying, especially young dudes like us telling this thing, because we could be up here talking about some of the silliest shit that you could ever want to hear. Oh, but, th yeah. but those aren't the things we're talking about. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, this is what it is, man. Y'all need to, uh, you know, uh, like we always tell you on every show, you know, you, you just need to know, uh, we just wanted to give you information about this, you know, because I know some of y'all still want to pursue the music, but it's like I said, uh, like, do your thing. Just don't get caught up in it and all this, you know, um, all this drama here, you know, um, the whole uh, what they call it, the Illuminati thing. Yeah. Which is like, you know, which always ha ha has been propaganda to me. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you never know, man. Like when you read these things about the agenda and all these yeah. things, you know, like you can't put anything past. You can't put anything past the government for the simple fact we know what they done to have America be the world power. We know. You know, they ain't get there by passing our roses. Sure ain't. They ain't get there by passing our roses. Say, you know or saying, saying excuse me. Yeah, or saying excuse me. They got there by brutal, blunt force. Bottom line. They the crabs in the yeah, barrel. We know this. It made it seem like try the same like our like we is the crabs in the barrel. They the ones that's gonna step over a a, a burial ground and build something on that. You know what I'm saying? But yes, that's, indeed. Even the stat, and the last thing I'll say with this, the thirty-six thousand two hundred ninety-nine dollars and twenty-five cents. That's what it, they're getting paid to house every two point two million inmates that is incarcerated in the United States. Oh, yeah? Do the math on that, man. How that's much, ninety-four dollars. How much them prisons go? That's ninety-four dollars <laughs> eighty-two cents day on the they on the Nasdaq. That's something. Hey, hey I'd rather hey. now if I if I didn't niggas better watch out. <laughs> if I didn't care, I'd rather bet on that than pork bellies. Because that's a for show shot. Prison is a for show shot. For sure. Yeah, that's not even like that's not even like playing the Nasdaq or so the uh, or so playing shot. the uh playing the stock market. Hell, you can bet on that with you can put a uh, hundred dollars in there. It's gonna double in the next year. You're gonna have a lot more money because prisons are gonna continue to get built. That's why you see all these fires they're talking about just all of a sudden happen. Fire season. Yeah, that's making room. 
Because, see, a tree can't grow back. It take a tree about 100 years to grow to its full capacity or more. Check it out, y'all. Y'all, 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 um, y'all make sure y'all follow up on what we've telling y'all. There's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of articles online about the whole, it's, it's no secret. Yep. It's no secret, but, you know, I just wonder how come more of us don't know about this. Why? Because we've been blinded. We've been blinded. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, man, it's, it's so simple. It's so simple and it's so clear what happened. We talk about it all the time. Mm. Give them money, they'll forget about the struggle. Oh, yeah. And ever since rappers have been making money, lots of money. A lot of it. The less you hear about the struggle. Yeah, the dope gonna sedate you too. You know what I'm saying? The less you hear about the struggle and you know, I just want to, we just want to, you know, like just make sure y'all understand this. Live your life at all means, but as long as you have this knowledge, as long as you have this knowledge, you you you'll be prepared and know what you're walking into. You know what I'm saying? You have to be prepared. You have to know what you're dealing with. Now is even more of a time to make sure you know the business. Make sure you know the business. Don't just get into it because you know, like you know, um, they're looking for these. They're looking to um, to keep our kids in the dark. Yep. Man, it, it, if you think about it, everything is set up like it's really aimed and set up at the kids, at the younger generation. Start, starting with school. Yeah. Starting with school. If you think about it, parents, if you think about it, from from what? When do kids start school? Like five years old? From five to 18. Something like that. From five to 18, oh. your children are in the hands of the government up until they're 18 because they're in school more than they're with you. By the time they come home from school and do their homework and you get home from work and everybody go to sleep, they're putting in more time with your kids than you are. So they're yeah. putting in all kinds of crazy messages about who discovered America and all this bullshit. They're putting yeah. all this into their heads because they're spending more time. They designed this to where they're spending more time with, with your kids than you are. So they yep. can put their agenda in their head and your kids can come and question you from what you done taught them. Yeah, but daddy, they... And, my teacher said, I don't give a damn what your teacher says. Yeah. This is what I'm telling you. Like, real talk. That's yeah. how you got to get. That's eight hours a day, not even including detention. Real talk. You know what I'm saying? That they spend with your kid. Check it out, y'all. We thank y'all for joining us for another episode of Truth Talks. I hope, you know, everybody get the message and you go do this research for yourself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We um thank the followers like my dude said earlier because y'all have really been weighing in on the on the topics we've been talking yeah. about. Y'all been giving us great numbers, it's you know what I'm saying? I love y'all comments, you know what I'm saying? Um we working to get this phone system up so y'all can call us and y'all can put y'all input in instead of just leaving comments because I know y'all would want to call in yeah, and talk about some of this too. You know what I'm saying? Also, y'all need to follow us on our Instagram. It's uh Truth Talks ninety nine. Yeah. Follow us on Instagram, Truth Talks 99, because some of the videos that we can't show you here, we're going to definitely post them on our site. So make sure you tune into the site and uh, man, stay.